Okay, so in previous lectures we developed the idea of the Euler-Lagrange equation in particular for uh, functionals that have an integrand that are that depends on x, u, and u prime. And remember, we're trying to find the uh, function u that extremizes the, the function l. Okay, so what I want to talk about in this lecture are some special cases of what are called the first integrals of the Euler-Lagrange equation. You can basically think, think of it as uh, we're going to integrate that equation once to make it simplified. And the reason that we do it is that if we, if we can um, identify these classes it just uh, of problems, it makes it easier to, to set up the problem as opposed to having to go through the hassle of uh, computing all of uh, potentially unnecessary derivatives and things like that. So um, let's begin uh, just by considering the functional that we've been talking about. And we had that was i uh, of u was equal to the integral from a to b uh, with an integrand of f, which was a function of x, u, and u prime. Okay, uh, so we want to consider that functional with and its associated Euler-Lagrange equation. All right, and that Euler-Lagrange equation looked like d by dx. Uh, of partial f with respect to u prime uh, minus partial f with respect to u equals zero. Let's call that equation one. So what we want to explore are three specific cases uh, where we can readily achieve the first integral of the Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay, so let's let's begin. We'll start with case A, and we'll call case A the case where f is equal to a, a subset now, just a function of x, let's say, and u prime, right? For this case, obviously the partial of f with respect to u is zero. And so the Euler-Lagrange equation given in equation one reduces to the following. d by dx of partial f with respect to u prime uh, is equal to zero. Call that equation two. And we can integrate this equation directly. And it leads to the following. It leads to the partial of f with respect to u prime. Right? If the derivative of that quantity is equal to zero, then we know that that quantity must be a constant. So that just equals c1, which I'll remind you is a constant. Okay? So if you encounter a problem like that, you simply need to, you know, if you need to take the partial of f with respect to u prime, set it equal to a constant, and now you uh, have an equation that you can, uh, that, that you actually need to solve to satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation. Now let's talk about a different case. We'll call this case B. And in this case, uh, f is going to be, uh, have no explicit dependent dependence on x. It's just going to be simply a function of u and u prime. Right. So how do we go about solving this case? Well, what I want to do is expand the derivative in equation one. Uh, gives the following. So I have that d by dx of partial f with respect to u prime. So let me write that out. d by dx of uh, partial f with respect to u prime minus partial f with respect to u. If I expand that term now, uh, that becomes partial squared f, partial x, uh, partial u prime, plus partial squared f, um, partial u, partial u prime, times du dx, plus partial squared f uh, with respect to u prime squared, and then this is du prime dx, and then I have this uh, minus partial f with respect to u equals zero, right? Okay, what can I say? Well, I know that there's no explicit dependence on x in this equation. Uh, the dependence on x is implicit here. So this partial, uh, the, the partial with respect to x quantity is going to give me identically zero. So that quantity goes away. I also know that du dx is u prime. And I know that du prime dx is u double prime. Okay, so I can now uh, write this quantity as uh, u prime partial squared f with respect to u and u prime 
plus uh, u double prime partial squared f with respect to u prime the quantity squared minus partial f with respect to u okay uh, equals zero let's call that equation four okay so it's not obvious to, um, what the next step is so I'm, I'm going to tell you the next step even if you wouldn't have guessed it um, what I want to do is multiply equation four by u prime and you'll see why in a second so when I do that obviously the first term becomes u prime the quantity squared partial squared f with respect to u uh, prime uh, and then u uh, and then the next term becomes this u prime u double prime partial squared f with respect to u prime the quantity squared uh, and then minus u prime uh, partial of f with respect to u equals zero okay let's call that equation five we're just going to leave that for a second okay now i want to consider the following quantity okay I'm going to consider the case of d by dx of u prime a partial f with respect to u prime minus f okay uh, and what I'm going to show you is that that's equal to equation five right so let's go ahead and just distribute that out um, so I need to use the product rule in this case so uh, this first term becomes u prime times d by df or dx rather of partial f with respect to u prime uh, and then plus uh, d by dx of u prime is u double prime uh, right times partial f with respect to u prime and then I have this this other term on f so that looks like minus there's no explicit uh, x dependent so I just need to use the chain rule and this becomes partial f with respect to u uh, times uh, du dx minus partial f with respect to u prime times du prime dx uh, and that's going to be right we'll keep going so what do we have here this term this is u double prime uh, this is u prime so what you can see is that I have u double prime times partial f with respect to u prime. And then over here I have minus u double prime times partial f with respect to u prime. So these terms cancel each other out, right? And I'm left with uh, u prime times, and now I'm going to go ahead and expand this out as well. Um, so remember, no explicit x dependence. So this, this becomes partial squared f, uh, partial u, partial u prime times du, d, uh, du dx which is u prime right plus um, partial squared f uh, partial u prime squared du prime dx which is u double prime right um, and then then I have this minus uh, u prime times the partial of f with respect to u let me just uh, finish out the expansion and I can say this is then u prime, the quantity squared, times partial squared f, uh, partial u, partial u prime, uh, plus u prime times u double prime, partial squared f, partial u prime, the quantity squared, um, then minus u prime, partial f, partial u, right? Let's call this equation six. So if you look at equation five, it looks just like the right-hand side here of equation six. Okay, so uh, I can go ahead and substitute equation six into equation five now uh, to get the following. That d by dx of u prime partial f with respect to u prime minus f uh, is equal to zero. Okay, call that equation seven. So I can integrate that once, right? We're doing a first integral, so I'm going to integrate once. And I end up with that u prime partial f with respect to u prime minus f is equal to c1, which is a constant. So there's the first integral. Okay? So again, if you have something that is only a function of u and u prime, you can jump right to equation 8 and begin solving from there. 
The final case I want to look at, we'll call it case C, actually doesn't lead to a differential equation. So we'll say this is the case where f is a function of x and u, but not u prime. So what can we say? Well, uh, for this case, we know that partial f with respect to u prime must be equal to zero. So equation one becomes partial f with respect to u is equal to zero. Let's call this equation nine. It's not necessarily obvious from staring at this, but equation nine actually leads to an algebraic equation instead of a differential equation. So let me, let me see if I can illustrate it best by an example. So to see this, go ahead and consider the following example. So let's say that we have some uh, functional i of u is equal to the integral from zero to one of uh, u minus x squared, let's say the quantity squared dx, we'll call that equation 10. So in this case, uh, we, we satisfy case c, right? So f equals f of x and u. So we can apply equation nine. And when we do that, we end up with the partial of f with respect to u. Well, what's the partial of f with respect to u? That's gonna be two times u minus x squared, right? And that's gonna be equal to zero. Uh, so what this implies is that u of x is equal to x squared, right? So it leads to an algebraic equation, okay? Something I'll point out is that equation 11 is not necessarily going to satisfy the endpoint conditions, right? That might be something like, in this case, u of 0 is equal to a, and then u of 1 is equal to some value b, right? So how do we satisfy them? Um, these are actually going to be satisfied. We're going to allow a discontinuous um, jump at the endpoints to satisfy them, okay? And those are really the only special conditions that I want to talk about. Um, what we want to talk about in, in the future lecture uh, going forward is something called the delta operator and how we can use that to, uh, to simplify uh, taking the variation of a functional.